welcome everyone on this very special occasion for Queen's University as we celebrate the 175th anniversary of the foundation of the Queen's Colleges in Belfast, Cork and Galway. I'm speaking to you from the Great Hall of the Lanyon Building, the original site of the Queen's College as it first was. You can feel the hand of history in this magnificent room. On the walls around me are portraits of men and women who have been influential in the progress of our university down through the years. There are distinguished staff and alumni, former chancellors and vice-chancellors, engineers, inventors, poets, painters, scientists, physicians, educators. And there is the young Queen Victoria, the founder of the Queen's College in 1845. This is the heart of our university, and it is the appropriate place from which to introduce this event today. We are marking this historic occasion by conferring honorary degrees on four outstanding individuals. They are world leaders in healthcare, medical science, engineering, and the humanities. And they are the presidents of four of the most renowned of what are known as the learned societies, the British Academy, the Royal Irish Academy, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and the Academy of Medical Sciences. In their leadership of these institutions and in their academic mission, they represent the values that Queen's has stood for since the very beginning. And so we are very excited to welcome them into our university community. This will be a very different degree ceremony, of course. There will be no processions, no audience, no handshakes. But I hope it will be no less memorable for those taking part and for all of you watching online. Thank you for joining us and for sharing this historic moment. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on this occasion, I'm afraid I have no alternative whatsoever but to appear in this remote form, for which I can only apologize. But I wanted to take the opportunity to send my warmest good wishes to all at Queen's University Belfast as you mark 175 years since the establishment of the Queen's Colleges in Belfast, Cork and Galway. The Queen's Colleges, established in 1845 by Her Majesty Queen Victoria, provided wider access to higher education on the island of Ireland, with the first students admitted to all three colleges in 1849. These colleges provided the foundations for the remarkable world-leading institutions we know today. Now, I've always been most struck by the sagacity of your motto, Sapientia et Doctrina Stabilitatis, adopted, adapted from the Book of Isaiah and generally translated as Wisdom and Knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Uh, there could hardly be a phrase more apt for these most testing of times. If I, if I may say so, I am delighted that Queen's University has chosen to mark this important anniversary through the award of honorary degrees to uh, the Presidents of the British Academy, the Royal Irish Academy, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and the Academy of Medical Sciences. My dear grandmother, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, was fortunate to receive an honorary Doctor of Laws from Queen's in 1924. And it is a mark of how much these honorary awards mean that she wore the robes for her visit to Queen's in 1962. Indeed, my family has long enjoyed a warm relationship with your remarkable university, ever since my great-great-great-grandmother established those early colleges. Now, I know that it was a very special occasion for the university when Her Majesty the Queen visited in March 2008 to celebrate a hundred years since the granting of the Royal Charter, signed by King Edward VII in 1908. This connection was further strengthened when, the que when Queen's was awarded Northern Ireland's first Regis Chair as part of Her Majesty's 90th birthday celebrations. Of course, uh, I've also 
had the enormous pleasure of visiting Queen's on several occasions, most memorably back in February 2002, when the university's historic Great Hall was reopened after a lengthy and truly magnificent restoration. Then, uh, in 2016, I was able to join you for the official opening of your Global Research Institute in Electronics, uh, Communications and Information Technology. And in February of this year, I was delighted to present your Vice-Chancellor and colleagues with a Queen's Anniversary Prize for Shared Education at the awards ceremony in Buckingham Palace. In fact, Queen's has received seven of these awards since 1997 in wonderfully diverse fields of study. These uh, important prizes recognize excellence and innovation in further and higher education across the United Kingdom. And they are a great testament to all the hard work and innovative ingenuity of staff and students at Queen's over many years. I had the uh, enormous privilege of knowing the celebrated Nobel laureate and Queen's graduate Seamus Heaney. And if I may, I would just like to end by quoting this, sh this short stanza he composed and read to my mother and father and the assembled guests at a lunch to celebrate Queen's centenary in 2008. Still red brickwork remains our bulwark. Here, exercise of mind has stood to us, for us, these hundred years, and will for good. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I can only send my warmest congratulations to Sir David Canadine, uh, Professor, Peter, Professor Peter Kennedy, Dame Anne Glover and Sir Robert Letchler on the award of their honorary degrees, together with uh, my special greetings to all the staff, students and alumni of Queen's University Belfast as you mark this very important milestone for your university. The first honorary graduate at Queen's was Sir Charles Wyville Thompson in 1871. He was an eminent oceanographer who had previously been Professor of Natural History at Queen's College Cork and later at Queen's College Belfast. He was also a Scotsman. And so for me, it's a happy coincidence that it's another Scotsman who has the honour of presenting our four honorary graduates on this very special 175th anniversary occasion. Our honorary graduates are Professor Dame Anne Glover, President of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, Professor Peter Kennedy, Immediate Past President of the Royal Irish Academy, Professor Sir Robert Lechler, President of the Academy of Medical Sciences, and Professor Sir David Canadine, President of the British Academy. The learned societies which they lead play a hugely important role in contemporary life. They're a hub of intellectual activity, what Seamus Heaney called exercise of mind, and they represent leadership of exceptional ability. Dame Anne Glover. Dame Anne Glover is a distinguished microbiologist. After graduating from the University of Edinburgh, she went on to undertake her PhD at the University of Cambridge. Her first academic post was at the University of Aberdeen in 1983, where she went on to be appointed Chair of Molecular and Cell Biology. On secondment from the University, she was appointed the first Chief Scientific Advisor for Scotland, a position she held for five years, and she later became Chief Scientific Advisor to the European Union between 2012 and 2014. Professor Glover was awarded a DBE in 2009. She's been a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh since 2005 and was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 2016. She has said that her interest in science was inspired by watching Star Trek as a child. It seemed unbelievable, she says, 
that you could just spend your whole life imagining the impossible, then making it real. And that's what scientists do. She's also an outstanding role model for the encouragement of women in science, something which we support very strongly here at Queen's through the Athena Swan Initiative. Professor Peter Kennedy. Professor Kennedy is a world expert in wireless communication and he's the 56th president of the Royal Irish Academy. From 2000 to 2017, he held senior positions at University College Cork, including those of Dean of Engineering and Vice President for Research Policy and Support. He is now head of the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at University College Dublin. He has over 350 research publications, including four patents, and has played an influential role in Ireland becoming recognised as an international leader in the field of electronics and electronics design. He was elected to the Academy in 2004. He became Secretary for International Relations in 2012, and later his portfolio was expanded to include policy. Speaking about the challenges of the global electronics industry, he has said, it's not good enough to be good enough. You have to be the best in the world at what you do. Sir Robert Leckler. The Academy of Medical Sciences is one of the youngest of the learned societies. Established in 1998, in a very short time, it's become the leading voice of academic medicine, biomedical and health research in the UK. Sir Robert Leckler has been its president since 2015. He qualified in medicine at the University of Manchester in 1975. He then spent four years as a junior doctor training in general medicine and nephrology before embarking on his PhD at the Royal Postgraduate Medical School, a PhD in transplantation immunology. His research interests revolve around transplantation tolerance, how to persuade the immune system to tolerate the foreign tissue while retaining full capacity to fight off infections and cancer. In 2004, he was appointed Vice Principal for Health at King's College London. He recently stood down as the founding executive director of King's Health Partners, one of the largest centres for healthcare education and research in Europe, which was set up in 2009 and involves seven major London hospitals. Sir David Canadine. Sir David Canadine is a globally acclaimed scholar and one of the most eminent historians of his generation. He was educated at Clare College, Cambridge, where he took a double first in history. Then at St John's College, Oxford, where he completed his DPhil, and at Princeton University, where he was a Jane Eliza Proctor visiting fellow. He has held major posts at Cambridge and at Columbia University in New York, and he's currently the Dodge Professor of History at Princeton. His celebrated books include The Decline and Fall of the British Aristocracy in 1990, History of Our Time in 1998, Margaret Thatcher, A Life and Legacy in 2017, and most recently, Victoria's Century, The United Kingdom, 1800 to 1906, which was published in 2018. He's been a welcome visitor to Queen's University. His work has repeatedly touched on Ireland, perhaps most significantly in his landmark biography of Andrew Mellon, the American industrialist, politician and philanthropist whose family's roots were in County Tyrone. He has been a member of the British Academy since 1999 and president since 2017. In interviews, he has reflected on the Academy's role in today's complex and conflicted world. He says, if we are to have wise and well-informed policies or wise and well-informed public understanding of the issues, then the humanities and social sciences have a vital part to play. These short citations can only scratch the very surface of the achievements of our four honorary graduates and their impact on society. It's my great pleasure to welcome them to the Queen's family. When the first students enrolled at Queen's, the first miles of railway line were just being laid in Northern Ireland. 
the technology of the 19th century, opening up a new era of communication. Today, we live more detached lives, a necessity brought about by the COVID pandemic. But we're able to reach out to each other by the technology of the 21st century, opening up a different form of communication. This virtual event is something that would not have been in the mind's eye of even the most far-sighted academics back in those first days of the Queen's College Belfast. But it's my earnest hope that before too long, we may be able to return to the old ways, that we may greet our honorary graduates again and congratulate them, not online, but in person. It's now my great pleasure to confer the honorary degrees. In the name and by the authority of the university, I confer on Anne Glover the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Vice-Chancellor, thank you. And it is special indeed to be receiving this honorary degree from Queen's University of Belfast on your 175th year celebration and even more special to be sharing the day with the presidents of the other UK and Irish academies. Uh, I have an additional pleasure, and that is that my father was born in Belfast, and I would have been so proud to tell him of this honorary degree today. I'm glad that we celebrate our universities, and you don't need me to tell you how good Queen's is, because you already know. Um, but universities are life-changing. The education, the friendships and the culture that you get from studying and working at universities are both a lifelong legacy and also a passport to make a difference in the world. And when I'm saying this, I'm thinking particularly of the students at Queen's at the moment who are experiencing very unusual and very difficult times for them, in many ways quite different from a normal university experience. But in thinking about you, I also think about the strapline of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. And the strapline is knowledge made useful. And universities like Queen's prepare you to generate that knowledge. All you have to do is the rest. I'd like to thank everyone at Queen's for the wonderful honour they have given me with this honorary degree on particularly such a special year for Queen's. And I'm really proud to be joining the Queen's family. Thank you. In the name and by the authority of the university, I confer on Peter Kennedy the degree of Doctor of Science in Engineering, honoris causa. Vice-Chancellor Greer, distinguished colleagues, it's a great pleasure for me to accept this honorary doctorate from Queen's University of Belfast, an institution I've known by its academic reputation since I was an undergraduate student in UCD. Indeed, it was the late Professor Carson Stewart who interviewed me for the bursary that set the, me on the path to my doctorate at the University of California, Berkeley, and ultimately my academic career. I came to know Queen's better when I served as external examiner here during my tenure as Professor of Microelectronic Engineering at your sister college, University College Cork. In particular, I got to learn about the visionary work at ESIT, which has produced not only excellent science and engineering, but has had a huge economic impact both in Ireland and globally. During my three years as president of the Royal Irish Academy, Queen's hosted biennial meetings of our council, where I got to know many of our Northern members and to learn more of the breadth and depth of excellent scholarship in this fine institution. I'm delighted, therefore, to join the ranks of your distinguished honorary graduates. Thank you. In the name and by the authority of the university, I confer on Robert Lechler the degree of Doctor of Medical Science honoris causa. Well, may I start by saying that I'm enormously grateful uh, for this honour. Being an honorary graduate of Queen's has a particular resonance for me because my mother was born and grew up in Malone Park, Belfast, and trained as an almoner, now we would call her a social worker, before moving to Edinburgh, uh, marrying my father and settling in England. But I'm truly delighted to be associated in this way with Queen's because 
Queen's is a university with a great deal to be admired for. In addition to your obvious excellence in education and research, Queen's is an unusually collaborative university with many international connections. Your record in commercialising your research is quite exemplary and outstanding. And you are a socially inclusive institution. So thank you so much uh, for conferring this honour on me. I'm truly delighted to be an honorary graduate of Queen's, particularly in this special anniversary year. Thank you. In the name and by the authority of the university, I confer on David Canadine the degree of Doctor of Literature honoris causa. I feel very flattered and privileged and delighted to accept the award of an honorary degree and to provide the address for this virtual graduation ceremony on behalf of myself and my fellow recipients, Sir Robert Lechler, Dame Anne Glover, and Professor Peter Kennedy. As Queen celebrates 175 years of academic excellence, we are thrilled that the university has chosen to honor each of us personally, and also to celebrate the work of the British Academy, the Academy of Medical Sciences, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and the Royal Irish Academy. As with my fellow honorary degree recipients, I'm disappointed not to be with you all in person, but we are so glad we can at least join you all via this virtual platform. The Charter of Queen's College Belfast, dated the 30th of December, 1845, declared that in or near the town of Belfast, in our province of Ulster, in Ireland, there shall and may be erected and established one perpetual college for students in arts, law, physic, and other useful learning, which college shall be called by the name of Queen's College Belfast. This charter, as a result of the Irish Colleges Act of July 1845, laid the foundations for Queen's University Belfast and indeed for University College Cork and the National University of Ireland at Galway. The first lectures for students began this very week in 1849 with an intake of less than 200. 175 years later, the university is home today to some 25,000 students. And in 1849, the academic staff consisted of only 20 professors, as there was no allowance for lecturers or demonstrators from the annual revenue of the college. Today, with over 4,200 staff, Queen's is an international centre of academic excellence, but rooted at the heart of Northern Ireland. The story of Queen's is the story of its people, your staff, your students and your alumni. As part of these 175th celebrations, the university will today launch its website, celebrating many of the great Queen's men and women. One such Queen's figure was the Scotsman James McCosh, appointed a professor of logic and metaphysics at Queen's in the early 1850s. McCosh was an important philosopher and some of his best work was written while he was at Queen's, but he then left Belfast in 1868 to become president of Princeton University, or as it was then called, the College of New Jersey. Indeed, there is a McCosh Hall at Princeton and Queen's continues to celebrate the McCosh transatlantic link with your annual religious studies lecture in his honour. And it is indeed from Princeton that I am addressing you all today and joining in celebrating the establishment of your remarkable university with its extensive global footprint, but very much anchored in the community you serve. It is, I must repeat, for me and for my fellow honorary graduates, a marvelous occasion for all of us to be associated with these great celebrations of this great university, so much part of Ulster 
yet so much nowadays, a global force for learning and for good. As Chancellor of Queen's University Belfast, I'm thrilled to join you in celebrating 175 years of academic excellence. I am, of course, very disappointed that I haven't yet been able to pay a visit to campus in my capacity as chancellor. And I so look forward to the day when we can once again celebrate important milestones such as this together and in person. I also want to give sincere thanks to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, for his warm message of congratulations. As the Queen's University of Belfast, and as a university that was created as one of three Queen's colleges, it's very fitting to have a royal message of good wishes for this celebration. And there is a lot to celebrate. Queen's has a long and impressive history based on a commitment to the highest standards of scholarship and intellectual discovery. And this university has played such an influential role over the past 175 years. Today, Queen's is an international center of excellence in research and education, firmly rooted in the community it serves. As we look to the future and imagine a post-COVID world, I believe universities such as Queen's will be even more critical to global social progress and no one is better positioned than Queen's to help shape that future with the traditions of academic excellence and public service. Queen's strength has always been its people, the staff and students and alumni who have built the university's stellar reputation and then made their mark on the world. Throughout the years, Queen's has been recognized for many things, but particularly for the men and women of distinction who have served as role models for staff and students with honorary degrees. The list of honorary graduates includes some of the most famous names of the 20th century. William Butler Yeats, Sir Winston Churchill, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Dr. Desmond Tutu, and Her Majesty the Queen Mother. I was personally delighted to receive an honorary degree from Queens in October of 2018. So as we prepare to mark 175 years of academic excellence, it is fitting that the university will continue this tradition by awarding honorary degrees to the presidents of the British Academy, the Royal Irish Academy, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and the Academy of Medical Sciences. I had hoped to be in Belfast last July to confer honorary degrees upon Sir David Canadin and Professor Peter Kennedy and Dame Anne Glover and Sir Robert Leckler and to launch the 175th anniversary celebrations. So although I cannot be there in person, I am delighted to be part of this virtual celebration and ceremony. Congratulations to all of you and to the Queen's staff, students, and alumni. My best wishes as you celebrate 175 years of academic excellence. As your chancellor, I am deeply honored to be part of your present and your future. Thank you for watching this 175th anniversary honorary graduation ceremony. Congratulations again to our new honorary graduates. We're honoured that you're now part of the Queen's University family. It's a family that has spanned 175 years, 175 years of history, of innovation, of impact and of community, 175 years of shaping a better world.